with more on the risks is Stephen Roach, former chair of Morgan Stanley Asia, currently a senior fellow at Yale University. Stephen, it's great to see you again. Your bearishness in January was one of the first times I really sort of sat up and took notice. And I'm curious how your thinking has evolved as we're halfway through the year now. Well, uh, thanks, Kelly. It's always good to see you. Um, you know, the, the Chinese outlook has taken a surprisingly bad turn for the, for the worse here, and the government's responding with uh, sort of the traditional playbook of uh, interest rate cuts, uh, infrastructure uh, spending, uh, and, you know, we'll, we'll see if it works. I think the second half will probably be, be a little bit better. But, you know, the big story and, and your bullet points you had on the screen just a second ago about the um, the lack of um, any breakthrough on military to military negotiations is spot on. I mean, um, you know, the Biden said the trip was good. Xi Jinping uh, sort of said roughly the same thing, if you read between the lines. But uh, the failure to really restart military to military um, uh, negotiations and discussions, I think, is a big sticking point, especially in light of the near accidents we've seen in the air and in the sea, to say nothing of the report in the Wall Street Journal on the uh, the Cuban uh, uh, gambit that China is doing with military training. And that's a worrisome uh, missing link in this uh, post-meeting climate. Do you at some point get more, you know, putting ourselves in investors' shoes here, do you get more positive on China, thinking, all right, they realize the severity of the problem, they're going to start to, you know, do as much stimulus as they can, there's going to be kind of a near-term boost here, or does even that leave you feeling pretty cold? Well, I think, the, you know, there is a trade-off here between the cyclical stimulus measures that are going to be taken uh, and the ongoing uh, longer-term uh, issues that China has with respect to growth, one of which is the ongoing conflict with the United States. But, you know, China's got an aging problem. It's got a productivity problem, uh, and it's being driven more by ideology than markets right now. And so, yeah, they can get a, uh, a pretty uh, healthy stimulus in the second half of this year, but you got to ask yourself what comes next. And, and the, the medium to longer term issues, I think, remain very disconcerting to me. I also found it striking that one of the things they're going to do is relax the policy on buying, you know, second homes. That's what fueled a lot of these ghost cities and these very empty, you know, high rise condos and the, in, the unsustainable infrastructure boom they were experiencing. So it seems as though they're out of ideas and just trying to go back to a playbook that we know can't work in the long run. Well, it was Xi Jinping himself who said that, you know, homes are for, um, living and, and not for speculative investment. And they've made a big deal in their deleveraging campaign on uh, limiting the speculative play in uh, second uh, homes. And, and now by relaxing that, uh, you know, there's a risk they go back uh, to the old uh, debt intensive growth model that got them into trouble uh, in the first place. So, you know, you can, you can raise some legitimate uh, concerns about backtracking on that that point as well. What would make you more constructive or positive or bullish, whatever you'd want to say it about China? Would it be some kind of change in tone uh, in terms of the domestic relationship, U.S.-China, geopolitics, something to that effect? Would it be the economy? Um, what would make you feel as though, you know, feel differently than how you feel now and have for the past several months? Well, I, I think two things. If they were to really address the... <clears throat> The, the structural productivity issues that um, uh, I think stem from uh, relying too much on state-owned enterprises where productivity has always been a problem and uh, truly relaxing the regulatory restraints on uh, the private and domestic businesses, especially in the inter Internet area, that would be encouraging. And then they've got this conflict with the U.S. that I uh, think needs more than just standard uh, uh, personalization of di diplomacy, as we seem to be getting uh, right now, but really a new architecture, a new structure of engagement. I've written about that uh, in my uh, latest book, but um, there doesn't seem to be a willingness, uh, certainly from the U.S. side, to push ahead with more creative approaches to uh, re-engagement.